Welcome to Uganda Catholic Television News on this very beautiful Wednesday evening, the very first day of the month of November 2023. I'm Oriama John Pasco. To begin with, the Uganda People's Defense Force and Marines, the Special Force Command and the Mountain Brigade built on intelligence deployed strategically at Kayanja Landing Site along Lake Edward and took out of action 11 suspected Allied Democratic Force rebels who are believed to have killed the two foreign tourists and their tour guide. The UPDF says they have been tracking down the bandits since the attack on the tourists last month. Sunday Gloria Aboj brings us the story. Two ADF rebels have been shot dead while four others have drowned and one captured by the UPDF on Lake Edward in Kasese district. Addressing residents of Katwe, Kabatoro Town Council in Kasese district, the commander Operation Suja, Major General Dick Olum, confirmed the incident. Katwe, Kabatoro and the National Park in Mueya here, it was, we had a very bad incident where some thugs, we would call them some unruly thugs, maybe ADF, came and attacked some of the tourists, killed two of them, three, and uh, most painful was that they were tourists, were foreigners, and after killing them, we've all this time been chasing and looking for them. People two brigade based in Hima, uh, and, and, and today it is, it is a order. I'm sure he may have some peace, he will have some rest. Now that this guy has been looking for, he virtually has been caught and the rest killed. So we think there has been a great information, uh, operation undertaken by the chieftains of military intelligence, guiding the operation force, guiding my force, until we came in touch with this. Of course, this has been a very superb operation, guided by His Excellency the President, where we got a number of special forces which also came into, into play, the Marines of the UPDF. I mean, it was a joint operation that really was led by intelligence and we've come out eventually with the, with the results. I also want to say we have confirmation that this is the same team that killed the white men, that killed these tourists in the park, and we are very happy that this has happened. We continue to search for this information. We, I mean, we continue to search for these other thugs that could have remained, but we are so sure that what we have done gives us a lot of encouragement that these guys have really come to their end. It revealed that the captured only identified as Njovu was a commander of the ADF rebels. General Olum said these were the same ADF rebels that attacked a vehicle and killed two people in Katolu and that recently killed two tourists and a guide at Queen Elizabeth National Park. Where we lost three people, two tourists, foreign nationals, and also one of the drivers who was the tour guide and the driver to the to those tourists. There has also also been another nasty incident in incidents in Congo, which is in 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 Kasindi, where my tactical headquarters is based, where they attacked a vehicle park station, parked station, and uh, they killed two of my soldiers. We killed one of them, and we took two guns from them. It is also very interesting to note that the Rubiria incident and the Kasindi Park incident are correlated and it is commanded, commanded by this same boy called Jovo. And today, after all this search with intelligence information, clear intelligence of information, which I should clarify here, searching for these tags, because they are only six and seven in number, <coughs> UPDF Mwambie kuna huyo mtu sisi hapana jua yeye. Yeah. Yaani hao wanakuja wana fikiri ni mgeni, kumbe amekuja na bomb. Yeah. Analala kwa nyumba yake anaenda natupa katikati ya watu nyinyi wote mnakufa. Ndio yeah. pande. Yeah. Tunaelewana? Ndio yeah. sawa. So musaidie sisi mkoa mnaomba sisi information. Yeah. Kama kuna information mnatuambia. Ndio yeah. sawa. Na sisi kama wanajeshi vile tunachoka porini huko. Yeah. Sasa duyu wametoka porini wanakuja katikati ya nyinyi. Now if you get an ID card 
the, the, in Jovo because intelligence has got all the information about them. We, money, we, we have a lot of intelligence information to give us information about who exactly is, up, is uh, undertaking such a mission to kill people. Now, if you pick them and you get in their luggages, you get one ID card of, like, of the driver of that, uh, of that uh, tourist car, then you know that they have been involved in that. And if you pick them and you get another uniform of the uh, Congolese military and you think this uniform was picked from Kassini, then you know they have been involved in that mission. So Thank you, Gloria. Moving on, the construction of Mount St. Mary's, a specialized hospital in Kasese municipality, is nearly completion. The State Minister for National Guidance, Godfrey Kabianga, shortly after touring the facility, has hailed the Bishop of Kasese Catholic Diocese, Francis Chibida, for the establishment of the facility in the region. Gloria was on the ground to give us the details. The State Minister for National Guidance, Kabianga Godfrey Chime, has announced that the construction of Mount St. Mary's Hospital, a specialized hospital in Kasese municipality, is near completion. Addressing media shortly after touring the facility, Kabianga, who hailed Bishop of the Diocese of Kasese, Right Reverend Francis Akrinus Chibira, for the establishment of a specialized hospital, said, by that because already he's setting up this hospital and you can see how beautiful it is and it's going to give all services compressive services specialized services that's why the sister was calling it a regional repair he's also um, setting up a very big cathedral where people will go for spiritual nourishment and he has also set up a secondary school uh, which is already in operation and the primary the primary school actually when Krempe mines hospital was destroyed uh, uh, in a hand. but all hospitals will run Krembe hospital st mary's hospital Rukoki, and others which are within the district so for us we really we are very very appreciative and i'm happy that i came uh, for this uh, tour i'm really impressed I strongly believe on the 18th, let us all come and witness the opening of this wonderful facility. The Minister of SAS, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Monica Musenero, has highlighted the importance of technology to the contemporary world, saying it has become increasingly impossible to divorce the realms of SAS, Technology and Innovation from national economic development. Musenero adds that Uganda cannot afford to remain a passive observer as a global initiative, primarily driven in the fields of SAS-led transformation, shape the future that will determine our survival. Thus, calling for a collective duty as a nation to seize these groundbreaking opportunities and align ourselves with global developments. Ahead of the National Science Week 2023, under the theme Uganda to Simbude, Day, our science led journey towards the social economic development, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation in the office of the President Monica Msero says their focus, among other things, will be aimed at enhancing the competitiveness of locally made products and reducing import dependence. This Science Week is coming to show you how the science gets out of the lab to make business. Some of you may be thinking, can we make our next camera in Uganda? And that's why we have the media, the press day. Why should we be importing these cameras all the time? Why can't we be making them ourselves? According to David Bonahasa, Chairperson Organizing Committee National Science Week, says this year's Science Week will convene the academia across the country to be inspired on the path to development. And we want to show you uh, what we are able to achieve, what we've been able to achieve over the last uh, two years as an institution, but also showcase the developments and new innovations in science across the different uh, value chains that we work with. And you will be hearing more about this in the subsequent speeches. This event is a cohesive effort that we not only put together as secretariat, but also working with the different scientists, different innovators in the country, uh, to not only um, show you, but also allow you to experience uh, the work that they're doing and allow you to be a part of the story of development of this country 
why is ISOC important? And you will hear very many reasons why it's important, but for me, one key thing stands out, inspire. How do we change our country if we cannot show people what it is that we are doing to change it? And that's what Science Week does. National Unity Platform, NUP Kasese Chapter, has started mobilizations ahead of local castle elections. Sunday Gloria filed the story. The National Unity Platform Party in Kasese District has started mobilization ahead of the local council elections. The coordinator for local council elections in Renzo Reserve Region, Honorable Mbaju Jackson Katika, while speaking to media in Bokonzo East Constitu constituency, said they have registered candidates at village and parish level on all administrative units of Kasese District. Honorable Mbaju Katika said, with the availability of candidates even on the Lake region of Kasese district that has previously been dominated by the NRM party, he is optimistic for positive results in the forthcoming elections. Today has been a special day, so important in the history of National Inter Platform in Kasese district and Renzo sub region. We have been in the Bukonzo East constituency launching the creation of our Kunga teams or mobilization structures and also beginning the process of identifying our LOC1 uh, candidates for the forthcoming election, uh, the women councils and the others. We had not been in Ponzo East and today was its first and we were launching. We are happy we have been welcomed so massively even when we had lost colleagues, uh, some of our supporters around, but at least the moment gathering that we have had here, this meeting has been so successful, it has not been disorganized and we are happy with security, it was present but it has not disorganized our meetings. We wish, how we wish would continue like this. Thank you very much for watching Uganda Catholic Television News. Good news for all. It's time for us now to go for a commercial break. UCTV. Good news for all. I am Father San Augustine Masbreka, bring you inspiration quotes on this use TV and don't miss good news for all. Thank you. It's unbelievable. Now, companies, businesses, and organizations can make bulk payments easily with Centenary Bank's corporate center swift to anyone without the need of a bank account anywhere, anytime, just like that. The recipient needs only their phones, national ID, and token number received via SMS to withdraw money from any center agent nearby. The Centenary Bank's corporate center swift is simple, secure, and convenient. You think it's too good to be true? Visit any of our branches countrywide or visit www.centenarybank.co.uk to know more. Centenary Bank. Centenary Bank is a member of Center Group regulated by the Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits of up to 10 million shillings are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda. Terms and conditions apply. You are watching UCTV. Good news for all. For this and more, tune in to Kasese Get Radio 100.5 in Western Region, located at the hill of the Diocese of Kasese. KGR brings you all Catholic programs and an advertising platform in all our radio shows like Good Morning Rinzori, Chama Tovoka, Ukute, The Business Show, Propeller, The Request Show and Sports, Evaluation, by Hingaba Kuluka, Late Night Show and many others. Our other services include Isuzu Tipa, a no car, public address system, live band, Omoke Kera, an audio recording studio, and outside live broadcast. For more information, call 0773-597-166 or visit our website www.kasesegetradio.com. Kaseseget Radio, Omusondoria, the voice of truth. UCTV, good news for all.
And as we conclude our bulletin this evening in sports, the 2023 Rukari Lake Mburo Mbarara Autocross Enduro has been launched today at the Vega Sports Center in Kanyanya, home to SMC Club. Compared to other motocrosses at this time around, many drivers and riders are to take part. Semugenze Mustafa brings us the story. Thank you very much, all viewers. I'm Lakataka Posea, no, I come from Uganda, and the Ugandan champion three times. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here at my press, all our press, our home of Southern Moto Club, Vegas Sports Launch, and a bar here at Chevando. I want to call all our all fans, all what I'm ready for Malala. But I'm going to take it as a test of my car because. And even if I'm, I'm coming as a test, I will, I will be a part spoiler to spoil this Kasim, the one who are reading championship for autocross. So I call, up all of, I call upon all of my fans, please come at Mbalala and see the vibe. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to Mbalala to win this one at least, then I, I, I see it up. Uh, that's my strategy. I'm happy that uh, it's a bit competitive because I've seen over 30 entries on it. And I like things which are competitive, so I'm happy by that. Uh, we have uh, 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 champions like uh, Sebus, Ronald, Duncan, Mubiru, and others. So it's a pleasure for me to see that I'll be competing uh, alongside those ones, and I'm promising them a win on that. Uh, all my fans in Barara, that is my home ground because I'm from uh, Shema district. I'm coming there to give you everything that I, that, that I can and uh, hopefully you will enjoy. We have designed a, a fairly smooth track around the Moesigua Resort Complex at Chebega. Uh, it is uh, around 7 kilometers the length of the track and of that like only two or 300 meters which you can really call rough but the rest is uh, smooth, just challenging corners and what have you, yeah, and uh, we will do two hits, so each competitor will do the course twice. Uh, Poncia, no, he has, he's yet to register, but since this event is uh, organized by Southern Motoclass, we are hopeful that we will come in. This uh, Saturday 4th, November, we have an event in Barara, Rukari, Lake Imburo, and uh, yeah, Mwesigwa Resort. Uh, many names, but uh, let's bear. Uh, I'm the COC of uh, Enduro Round 4 uh, that is going to take place at the very, at the very venue, uh, Rukari. Um, I can assure you that uh, riders have already registered. So far we have over 20. Uh, both uh, in all classes, you know, we have four classes. We have uh, class one, class two for the adults, and then you have junior classes, J J1 and J2. Um, the course for juniors is two kilometers. Of course, with challenges, they're going through swampy areas, uh, muddy uh, spots. So, like uh, you know, enduro. Enduro is about endurance. It's not about being fast. It's about how you endeavor, how you maneuver uh, certain sports to become to come out victorious. We shall be done with the bikes, and then we start with autocross. As the bikes will be running, we shall also have the 4x4 run, because they are separate tracks, but near. So the fans will be, will be enjoying, because they will be watching bikes uh, attack at the challenges, the mud, as well as see the 4x4 doing the very, very swamp. Uh, but just uh, separate trucks, but close to each other. Thank you, Sam Genze. And now that marks the end of our bulletin this very beautiful evening. I'm Oriama John Pascoe.